Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today on The Missing Black, we have a new episode on the Clinton Avenue Five. On August 20th, 1978, was a hot summer day in Newark, New Jersey. 16-year-olds Randy Johnson, Michael McDowell, and Alvin were joined by their 17-year-old friends, Ernest Taylor and Melvin Pittman. Melvin was called Ricky amongst his friends. These boys were only friends these boys were best friends. They were brothers. They grew up together since they were babies. During the summer, the boys would spend as much time as they could together, playing sports, chilling at the corner stores, and giggling around. After hanging out, during the day, the boys would go back home, wash up, change clothes, and have dinner with their family. Afterwards, they would go back outside in the evening to do some local repairs for their community, but to also earn some money to hang out with their friends. After they were done, some of them would return home and some vanished after more than 30 years without a trace. Witnesses made reports stating that they had seen the boys at various locations, but what became of them and their case had became a dark mystery that has haunted their neighborhood all of their lives to just disappear without a trace. This case has dealt with psychics and two confessions. Two confessions that had two different stories. One confession, which led to a conviction, a one confession that led to him being found not guilty. This has been one of the most frustrating and disturbing cases that I've ever read within the Missing Black series. Most people have never heard of this case. Today, we are going to examine the case of the Clinton Avenue Five. Newark, New Jersey is the largest city in Jersey and located in the heart of the Metro New York region. Newark is the cultural center of the state, offering endless arts and entertainment options. This is also the nation's third oldest city. The city is divided into five wards, Central, East, North, South, and West. Each of them hold their own charisma. During 1978, Newark was full of abandoned buildings. So many of those buildings caught on fire, more than 2,600 of them. And because of that, firefighters were told to let the vacant buildings burn. During the 1970s, there were still racial tensions and social economics that had decreased, which caused vacant abandoned buildings, homelessness, and drug abusers. A 71-year-old woman named Dorothy Allison was described as being a psychic detective. She has worked with police officers around the country on homicide and missing person cases. In May 1996, the Newark police detectives took her seriously enough that several officers and dogs poked through vacant buildings and fields that were bug-infested high grass near industrial areas. Miss Allison was able to find one field area that she believes the boys died at. She stated that she had noticed teeth in the ground and describing a vision of a piece of clothing like a plaid shirt or rag being burned. But with that information, detectives did not move forward. In 2010, Roger Royster notified Newark detectives that in 1978, he had joined the other teenagers in the back of a pickup truck that evening. But when his father told him to get out, he did. Royster saw the boys with Lee Anthony Evans last. Remind you, all the parents of the boys thought it was very suspicious that the man named Lee Anthony Evans hired their boys for work that night. The teens have done work for him on several occasions. Lee stated that the boys moved boxes for him that night. Since Lee was under so much pressure from the families, Authorities spoke to Lee several times regarding that hot summer night. Where did he drop them off? What occurred that night? Investigators found his story interesting, but they didn't have enough evidence against him. When he was asked to take a polygraph test, Lee agreed. Lee took several polygraph tests and passed each time. Investigators couldn't connect him to their case or the boy's disappearance. Unfortunately, the investigators had little to work with, and they had tracked the teens by their security numbers, though they weren't any activities connect them due to their age, and they have never been in trouble with the law. 
They had no fingertips to run in any system, and they only had dental records for one of the boys, which made it very hard to find any bodies that could possibly be one of the boys. Remind you, all of this is in 1978. While the case was cold between 2007 to 2011, investigators asked the families for swabs of their DNA for tests for any identifying bodies and remains that were recovered, and someday they may discover the truth as to what happened to the boys. Now the cold case had DNA, they may find out the truth. Rogers Taylor, the brother of the missing Ernest Taylor, claimed to have a weird exchange in 2008 while working at home. He had received a visit from Lee. Taylor said that he became a born-again Christian and he wanted to clear his conscience when Taylor asked him what it was about. Lee said it's about the boys. Taylor didn't want to be the only witness and so he invited Lee to his sister's home. While at his sister's home, there was a Newark detective as well. Lee confessed that he did it and there were people involved. Later on, police detectives and Lee denied the confession but now, in some way, the Newark police had evidence to point to who committed the crime. Later on in the year, Philander Hampton was in prison during the time, and he wanted to confess as well. He felt that his life has been in shambles and because of the crime he had committed. Philander told investigators and prison officials that his cousin Lee indeed murdered those boys and that he was complicit in the act. In fact, he lured the boys to their death. Following the confession, there weren't any arrests. For more than a year, Newark investigators were building their evidence to arrest Philander Hampton and Lee Anthony in 2010. Each man were charged with five counts of murder and arson. The bell was set at $5 million. Philander wanted to lower his sentence, and so he cooperated with detectives and laid the entire crime out. Lee and Philander were in the drug game. Lee noticed that a pound of weed was missing and he believed that the boys stole it because they had often worked for him. Lee told Philander, which they both agreed to scare the boys into confessing and thinking the boys would return it, but unfortunately, Lee had an entire plan in mind, a different plan. Hampton lured the boys into a vacant building, and Lee started questioning the boys at gunpoint while having a gallon of gas with him. Next, Lee forced the boys into a tight closet. Once they were inside, he nailed the door shut. Lee poured gasoline all over the door and room, lighting the gas on fire, burning the boys alive. Hampton led investigators to the vacant area, but there weren't any fragments, no human remains, no evidence left. Even though Hampton was providing the jurors all this evidence, he wasn't a credible witness because of his past as a drug dealer, record of crime, and plus his brother was a murderer as well. But with Lee, he didn't have a record. Lee provided jurors with questions during their trial. Why would he pick up the boys with his company's logo on the truck? There were five teenagers against two men. How would five teenagers get locked in a closet with only one nail? In 2011, Evans was found not guilty, and Philander Hampton pleaded guilty to the murders at his August 2011 trial and was sentenced to 10 years in prison, plus a $15,000 in relocation expenses upon his release. He was released from custody in February 2017. To conclude, um, I'm still currently investigating this case. Um, I wish detectives would have go more into Philander Hampton. Something about him ain't right and is not sitting well with my spirit. Um... I've also read in the case that Rogers Taylor, Ernest Taylor's brother, stated that um, Lee only took a polygraph test once. It wasn't several times, it was once. And the one time that he took it, he failed. And I'm like, why they never mentioned this in the trial? But um, I want to hear what you guys think. Please comment below. What are your perspectives on of the case? And um, if you guys would like me to have another episode in regards to the missing black um you can dm me or just comment below what case you would like me to talk about in regards to this series um yeah just please like share subscribe and there will be more content okay bye you guys